Hey everybody, Brian Von Vier here, back at it again. Before we get started, make sure you have a nice little snacky and a drink handy because we've got another doozy. Now make sure to check out Riptovia as well, where we are going to be posting a lot of stories, not just the ones that we have here, but a lot of different ones, one-offs, things that you might be interested in, but not interested in hearing on Rip daddy's channel so that being said check out riptovia links are going to be in the description below with that all out of the way what was the weirdest way a pc or npc was introduced part one in my very first session i knew nothing about DD, and i was basically a blank slate so that's how i was introduced to the story as two of the players were walking down the road heading towards Waterdeep, they see a man on the side of the road, naked with a small cloth covering his junk, eating an apple, looking lost and confused. The DM once randomly introduced the big bad evil guy by having him punch his way out of the floor, offer to help us, then trap us in a room with a boulder. What is he, Chris Redfield? Context, it was relatively early on in this campaign, third session, and we were searching for a way to get off an island all the PCs woke up on with no memory of how. We were walking through the forest when we heard a young woman call for help, and we tracked the noise to be coming from a nearby pit that was 30 feet deep. After hearing the call of a damsel in distress, our half-elf druid named Icarus did the only reasonable thing in response, which was to jump down what could be best described as a sinkhole to save her, just to break his legs and a few other bones. So we had to get both the noblewoman, who we were introduced to as Elsinandra, and Icarus, the half-elf, all simp out of a hole in the ground that was 30 feet deep. Soon after a few wacky hijinks, we shortly learned that Esnerelda is the princess of a kingdom known as Kalmarok, where we'd soon visit once we got off that island. Not something that happened to my group, but some I knew who played once told me about this. Apparently, after fighting a horde of undead, they found a child, apparently smelling the remains of the undead. As it turned out, it was a 200-year-old person who was cursed with immortality and unable to die. So when they asked the supposed child what they were doing, it responded with this remark. I'm smelling the body, so that maybe I can become closer to death. <laughs> they ended up bringing the immortal suicidal toddler around to help it break the curse on which Broken asked the party to kill it, which of course their rogue responded by stabbing the kid and looting the body. As you would. In a Mass Effect themed campaign I ran, I introduced one of the players who was playing an infiltrator, kinda like a ranger rogue hybrid. If you played the Mass Effect video games, you know what I'm referring to, by having his character assassinate one of the party members. The character who got assassinated was a criminal named Ark, who had double-crossed some very bad people and they wanted him dead, so they hired this assassin to kill him. However, the System Alliance needed Ark because he was also an expert engineer. The mission the party was tasked with was to be part of the crew of the first manned mission through a mass relay, but the System's Alliance didn't want to send their best people through this relay and possibly never see them again. Their solution to this was to find civilians with checkered pasts and promise them pardon and such, and thus fill out the crew roster. Ark was their first choice to be the engineering tech on the ship, so when they found out someone had put a hit on him, they found who was doing the job and paid them double to stop them from doing it. But they couldn't just have the assassination not happen, as that would make it obvious that someone had bought the assassin off. So they faked the assassination instead, which made the people trying to kill Ark believe he was dead, and made sure the assassin's reputation was intact. The party was really confused when they saw Ark just randomly get shanked by a passerby though, and I love Mass Effect so I really wish I could have played too. Had a player in a 3.5 game where she got the leadership feat, so she brought in a character from the book she was writing. She didn't want to give me any details about the character because it would spoil the book and what details I was given as the DM was not allowed to use in the world. So, mostly out of spite, because this is like the 12th instance of this player trying to insert her book into my story, and then getting very upset when I try and compromise with her boo-hoo boo-hoo. The second character was introduced via the party opening the door to their guild, and seeing a winged human with a dog. Hi, I'm Soren. I exist. And that's how it happened. He canonly appeared out of nowhere one day claiming to know our knight. To this day, he remains an enigma, a person who exists but doesn't exist. 
We had two players who needed to drop the game due to COVID messing up their schedules. One died in a difficult combat and opted to let their character just stay dead since they were leaving anyway. The other had her character get freaked out by the death and go home, in case she got to come back. Two months later, the one who had let their character die was finally able to rejoin. They made a new character and DM promised to give a seamless introduction. My character was a monk who lived at a secret temple in the mountains. While visiting her temple with the party, she had a dream vision of an attack and asked the party if we could stay at the temple an extra night. Two dragons got into an aerial battle directly above the temple. The white dragon bit the head off of the red dragon. The red dragon's head put a hole in the temple ceiling, and a half-elf paladin jumped through the hole to see if we were okay. Seamless is not the word I'd use, but that's how our player's new character met the party. Half-elf paladin just happened to be in the area and see a hidden temple get crushed by a falling dragon head. I was being brought into an ongoing campaign, and the GM liked to bring in new players in a hard-to-ignore fashion. The team had to relay a message to the king from, I believe, a succubus with whom he would had previously struck a deal. And with the way his realm was situated, he was in a throne on a raised stage-like area with a massive window behind him. As the team's warlock spoke with him, the cleric was the only one to notice a suspicious speck off in the distance, fleeing a thunderstorm. The movement was erratic and swiftly heading towards the city, but he said nothing to anyone else until it was close enough to start making out details. Before anyone could react, a full-sized thunderbird crashed through the massive window, flapping and zapping everything around it while a burning, tiefling barbarian on its back hung on to dear life, slashing away at it with his greatsword. The group put it down, leaving me, the barbarian, awkwardly standing there with little more than a loincloth and a sword in a room full of finely dressed nobles and broken glass. The group was dismissed from the throne room, and I explained on the way out that it had killed my previous adventuring party, leaving me with no one to travel with and a desire to figure out why a Thunderbird was on the material plane. Within a day, I'd quickly established myself as a member of the group. TLDR Tiefling Barbarian Rodeo Style rides a Thunderbird through a throne room, leaves with friends. Also note, GM had to make introductions hard to ignore because the group's sorcerer was a bit oblivious to other PCs, uh, to put it gently. I'm the DM in this story. We had two players who couldn't join until the second session, and the previous session, the party left off, having stayed the night at a party mate's uncle's apartment and smithy. The start of the next session, we introduced Astra, the dragon-born sorcerer bard. Astra teleported from faraway ruins to the forge, atop the forge master's steel defender, a Clydesdale horse named Clyde. The first time I played third edition D&D, a long time back now. I was joining an existing game, so it's more like how the rest of the party was introduced to me. My new character was outside Zenithil Keep, Moonsea, and Forgotten Realms for people who may not know, sorry if I mispronounced, which was on fire as part of a gathering crowd when the doors crashed open and out tumbled a winged elf a minotaur with a bowl cut, and a pixie with maracas. The pixie takes one look at the gathering crowd and says, Move on, nothing to see here. I, DM, was running a campaign and the players were looking into a yawn tea pure blood tavern called the Snake's Den. Original name, I know. That when the players decided to tail one of the tavern goers as she left, they followed her through the city until she reached a broken down building with only a door frame and a door still standing. The players then watched Alan as she knocked in the sequence and then walked through the door, disappearing. So naturally, the players walked up and repeated the knocking sequence and walked through. Long story short, that's how my players met my lich magic item vendor named Richter Von Trya. I won't go into his details in this post, but I'd be happy to tell them if you guys are willing to hear. In a campaign I was running, the theme was a Resident Evil-style infectious outbreak via a weird type of moss. All the while, I would make sound effects for the zombies, which was low. Well, low for vocal range, raspy hiss. Well, the party was walking from town to town. Like usual, I called for a perception check. The DC was like 11, so most everyone had heard it. A low, raspy, hissing voice coming from the next trail over. The party draws their weapons, all rushing towards the voice, only to find 
Kanash. Kanash is a friendly grung merchant who speaks like Candace from Phineas and Ferb when she is exposed to parsnips, but much more high-pitched. Tenor gang. Kanash was pushing and shoving trying to get his cart out of a deep pothole. If you looked up the word unconventional in the dictionary, you'd only find the character art I drew of Kanash. His cart is a long kayak fitted with two oars, a chest of holding, and a full set of four wheels at the bottom. After the party assessed he wasn't a threat and helped him out, their main merchant was unlocked. I introduced my players in various ways in an attempt to break the stereotype of you meet in a tavern. They were all heading to the same inn, however, I first introduced the fighter who was searching for his brother all around the city. She then bumped with the druid and started talking to him, asking if he saw his brother. Then from the alchemy store in front of them, a lot of screaming and swearing is heard from the inside. Then a little explosion, and after a few seconds, more screaming until a figure gets thrown out of the window. It was the artificer, fighter's brother, followed by a really angry dwarf with all his beard burned from an experiment of the artificer. Then they all kept walking towards the inn when they encountered this figure being robbed while he was blankly staring to the robber. He was the sorcerer who was confused as to what the robber was doing. They helped him and got him to the inn where more fighting was heard from outside. They opened the doors to see a huge bar fight and this Goliath throwing people and bottles around. He, of course, was the barbarian. Hey everybody, Brian Von VA just checking in after the vid. Hope everyone's doing all right. Make sure to leave a like on the video and to subscribe and to ring that bell for notifications when we post or go live. Also, make sure to check out Riptovia, our secondary channel, link is in the description below, where we will be posting all kinds of different stories. Some sad, some happy, some spooky, some glad. Things that you necessarily wouldn't see here, but do involve D&D. And make sure to go on our subreddit r slash Mr. Ripper if you have a story that you'd like to post or contribute to us if you want us to read it out loud. Finally, roll a d20 for a perception check so you can come over to me, Brian Von VA, on Twitch and on YouTube, so you can follow me for all sorts of juicy, lovely, fun content. As always, I try to end things on a positive note, and today is no different. Today, I'm going to teach you all a life lessons that I had to frickin' learn the hard way. Patience. Things in the world are a little bit hectic sometimes, and you will overthink a lot of things, but if you slow down and relax, take a deep breath, have a little faith in those around you and to the things that you're doing, you will discover everything will be all right. Patience is a virtue. Do not worry about things that you cannot control because you can only control yourself and your actions. Have faith in the people around you, have faith in your job, have faith in everything, but put in as much effort as you can to be the best person you can be. All the love, everybody. I'll see you next time. Bye for now.